Hey Canucks fans and welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Friday, December the 1st. Wow, what a game last night. What a day yesterday for the team. But let's talk about the game first. 5-3 victory for the Canucks. They wind up their six-game road trip 3-2-1, the seven points. Pretty good considering the level of opposition. Not the best ever, but I think we'll take the seven out of the 12. And last night's game was very exciting, especially the third period. Back and forth, lead changes throughout the second and third. And so many storylines, but I'm going to talk about them very quickly because I want to get to a, a bigger point at the end. Number one, of course, is Daniel Sedin. Not only point number 999, but he got his 1,000th point on a goal, no less. And then he also finished actually with another point, a three-point night to come with one, to wind up with 1,001 points. And I'm going to talk about that in a couple seconds here, or in a couple minutes probably more accurately. So he had a great game. Henrik also had three points. Louis Erickson, the linemate, had two points. So between the three of them, their triple crown line, so to speak, they had eight points. I know three of them came on that last empty netter where it seemed like no one wanted to score. They're all passing the puck to each other. Thankfully, the puck went in. But yeah, eight points between the three of them. They're getting a, a bit more ice time than they have been in the first uh, six weeks of the season. So it looks like the Canucks have found their secondary, primary scoring, whatever you want to call it. It's awesome. And it's obviously a, a good thing for the team. So good on Daniel. Congratulations, Daniel. More on that in a second. Good, good job, Henrik, and good job, Louis Erickson. The debut of Nikolai Godolbin. He looked great. He looked... He didn't look out of place. He looked fine on the first line. He was making good passes. He was making good decisions. He was skating well. He played well enough defensively. So he fit right right in on that line with Bo Horvat and Brock Besser. So hopefully Godobin will continue to get a chance to play this Saturday against Toronto. And I joked around on YouTube, I mean on Twitter yesterday saying if this was Willie D, Godobin might get benched for the next game. And it wasn't the best joke ever, but my point was you never knew with, with uh, Willie Desjardins' deployment decisions. Hopefully that good open does play against the Leafs this Saturday. Brock Besser, what can you say about this guy? He overtook, he retook the NHL scoring lead. He now has 25 points. He has the most goals and most points as, as a rookie, um, outnumbering Mar Matt Barzell by one or two. And he had a great game, three, goal, uh, three points. He had two goals and one assist. And he looks great. Um, he looked good on this entire road trip. He maybe got a little tired in those middle games in New York, but generally started off well. Pittsburgh and Philly ended off well, and then um, it was great to see Brock Bester going well. So between Bester, Horvat, and whoever's on that line, Godobin or Berchi, and Sidney and Erickson, um, there's good balance scoring right now. Power play still good. It's actually risen to 13th in the league, which is which is amazing compared to where they've been the last few seasons. And Anders Nilsson <laughs> played a bit of a crazy game, but he made huge saves. Helped out by the crossbar in the post a couple times, but he made huge saves throughout the night, and he was also a, a big reason why the Canucks won. So those are just a few storylines. Very exciting game and a crazy day for the Canucks. An emotional day considering the bad news that we, they started off with in the morning. Uh, did a video blog about Derek Dorsett yesterday. Thank you for the great feedback on it. Got a lot of views on that one. I think a lot of people wanted to talk about it and wanted to hear about him. So it was nice that the Canucks could say they, they, they won that game for Dorsett. I think they could use that, like I said yesterday, as a rallying cry, as inspiration for the entire season. But it was, it was wonderful to wind up a crazy emotional day with a crazy emotional win, with a lot of things going into that win. All right, gonna spend the last two minutes talking about Daniel Sedin and Henrik Sedin. So Daniel Sedin now has 1,001 career points in 1,251 or 12 or so, yeah, 1,251 career games. So that puts him at a 0 .80 points per game. So 0.8 points per game for his career. Henrik, on the other hand, has uh, 1,035 points in 1,274 games. So 34 more points in about uh, about 23, 24 more games. So Henrik's uh, uh, career average is 0 0.81 points per game. So you got Daniel at 0.8, you got Henrik at 0.81. So base virtually equal. So my question to you Canucks fans is, if you could only have one, and yes, obviously their success was predicated upon each other's success. They basically played together in their entire lives, and of course their entire NHL career with the Vancouver Canucks. But no, actually, it's not even if you can only take one. My question to you is, who has had the better career? Daniel Sedin or Henrik Sedin? Who has had the better career? We just established that points per game, they're virtually equal. You look at awards. Henrik Sedin won the Hart Trophy back in 2010 after a, a, a great 1,012 point season. So he won the Hart Trophy as voted by the NHL Hockey Writers. In 2011, Daniel Sedin won the, um, what the, 
Oh, the Ted Lindsay Award. Sorry, I had a mind, mind blank for a sec. He had a, a, he had a great season, 104, 105 points the next year in t- 2011. And he won the Ted Lindsay Award that's actually voted on by the players. So you had Henrik winning the Hart in 2010. You had Daniel winning the, the Ted Lindsay in 2011. Both obviously very prestigious awards. Their career points are almost the same. Points per game, almost the same. Henrik was the center. Daniel was the left winger. Henrik was the captain. Daniel assistant captain. Henrik had that Ironman streak going. Daniel didn't have uh, that same streak, mostly because thanks to Duncan Keith way back in the day. Some would argue that Daniel wasn't the same player after that Duncan Keith elbow, but regardless, you had those things. So there are a lot of things to, to look at. Points per game, you know, awards, the, the style of play, how they play, their leadership. Do you take Henrik, the center, the, the, the natural leader, the distributor? He has basically 120 less goals than, the, than Daniel, but obviously he has about 140 more assists than Daniel. So do you take Henrik, who's the playmaker in the center, where a lot of the play drives through and uh, the power play drives through him? Or do you take Daniel, probably the, the more pure goal scorer, the better shot, and, and, and you, you could argue the more dangerous player? So they're both very smart. They're both great leaders. But, and they're, like I said, their career averages are about the same. So my question, and for whatever reason, I would love to hear what you think, Canucks fans. Who has had, of the two seeding twins, which one has had the better career? Leave your comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you. And get ready. Toronto Maple Leafs coming to town tomorrow. I actually don't do videos on the weekend, but I think I'm going to uh, make an exception for tomorrow just because of the magnitude of the game. Austin Matthews and the crew comes in. Vancouver coming off this big win. Feeling good about Daniel. Feeling bad about Dorsett. But it all led to a very emotional and very exciting day for the team yesterday. Have a great, have a great day. God bless Canucks fans. And go Canucks go.